Hi everyone, I am Sturt. Thanks for tuning in. I recently did a video about scary stories to tell in the dark. It was a review on the movie. I went to see it about a week ago um, and it was it was fantastic. The video is linked in the description. Today's video is piggybacking off of that because I found these today. I'm super excited. So I grew up reading these books. I absolutely owned them when I was maybe nine or 10 years old. I don't know what happened to them. Obviously my parents got rid of them at some point or I got rid of them, but I found these today. I'm super excited and thrilled. I wanted to share the nostalgic experience with you and read a couple of passages. Um, just kind of remind you what these books are all about and also check out the amazing creepy illustrations with you all. That's a very iconic piece in these books are the illustrations are unforgettable. I feel like they were kind of burned into your brain as a kid. Like if you own these books, you read them, those illustrations are with you forever. Haunting you. As you all remember, the iconic Scarecrow, which by the way is a character that is in the movie and it's amazing and creepy and gross and awesome. All the stories are collected by Alvin Schwartz and I'd like to read the intro that he wrote. Here's another illustration, by the way, to start the introduction. It's titled Strange and Scary Things. Pioneers used to entertain themselves by telling scary stories. At night, they might gather in somebody's cabin or around a fire and see who could scare the others the most. Some girls and boys in my town do the same thing today. They get together at somebody's house and they turn out the lights and eat popcorn and scare one another half to death. Telling scary stories is something people have done for thousands of years. For most of us like being scared in that way. Since there isn't any danger, we think it's fun. There are a great many scary stories to tell. There are ghost stories. There are tales of witches, devils, boogeymen, zombies, and vampires. There are tales of monstrous creatures and of other dangers. There even are stories that make us laugh at all this scariness. Some of these tales are very old and they are told around the world and most have the same origins. They are based on things that people saw or heard or experienced or thought they did. Many years ago, a young prince became famous for a scary story he started to tell but did not finish. His name was Mamelius and he probably was nine or 10 years old. William Shakespeare told about him in The Winter's Tale. Some knowledge dropped right there. It was on a dark winter's day that his mother, the queen, asked him for a story. Do your breast, do your breast, do your best to frighten me with your sprites, she said. You're powerful at it. I shall tell it softly, he said. Yawn crickets shall not hear it. And he began. There was a man dwelt by a churchyard, but that was as far as he got. For at that moment, the king came in and arrested the queen and took her away. And soon after that, Mamelius died. No one knows how he would have finished the story. If you started as he did, what would you tell? Most scary stories are, of course, meant to be told. They are more scary that way, but how you tell them is important. As Mamelius knew, the best way is to speak softly so that your listeners lean forward to catch your words and to speak slowly so that your voice sounds scary. And the best time to tell these stories is at night. In the dark and the gloom, it is easy for someone listening to imagine all sorts of strange and scary things. This, the big toe. I wanna to say something about the big toe. So in the movie, they actually have this short story played out in a scene. It is one of the funniest ones in the movie. It's, it's scary and creepy and weird, but it is funny. There's some funny moments I kind of mentioned in the video. Again, I linked it below, how there are these moments like in Stranger Things, these comedic moments. And oh my gosh, I was almost, I was in tears laughing and I couldn't stop. It was creepy, but there were just some statements said that made it hilarious. Ooh, look at this. I don't like feet. Look at him. Don't you just want to snuggle with him and kiss him? So classic. Hey guys, I'm doing this YouTube video. I'm gonna do a reading and it's called The Hearse Song. Don't you ever laugh as the hearse goes by for you may be the next to die. They wrap you up in a big white sheet from your head down to your feet. They put you in a big black box and cover you up with dirt and rocks. All goes well for about a week. Then your coffin begins to leak. The worms crawl in, the worms crawl out. The worms play pinnacle on your snout. They eat your eyes. They eat your nose. 
They eat the jelly between your toes. A big green worm with rolling eyes crawls in your stomach and out your eyes. Your stomach turns a slimy green and pus pours out like whipping cream. You spread it on a slice of bread and that's what you eat when you are dead. Look at this one. The dead man's brains, home sweet home. Check this out. Hannibal Lecter style. How cute, there's a comic. The slithery D, he came out of the sea. He ate all the others, but he didn't eat me. The slithery D, he came out of the sea. He ate all the others, but he didn't eat. This one is the second book in the collection, More Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This scene is totally in the movie. It is gnarly, super scary and weird and gross. Check out this illustration. This is one of my favorites. From the second book, I'm gonna read The Bride. Look at that, just so beautiful on her special day. The minister's daughter had just gotten married. After the wedding ceremony, there was a great feast with music and dancing and contests and games even old children's games. When they got to playing hide and seek, the bride decided to hide in her grandfather's trunk up in the attic. They'll never find me here, she thought. As she was climbing into the trunk, the lid came down and cracked her on the head and she fell unconscious inside. The lid slammed shut and locked. No one will ever know how long she called for help or how hard she struggled to free herself from that tomb. Everyone in the village searched for her and they looked almost everywhere but no one thought of looking in the trunk. After a week, her brand new bridegroom and all the others gave her up for lost. Years later, a maid went up into the attic looking for something she needed. Maybe it is in the trunk, she thought. She opened it and screamed. There lay the missing bride in her wedding dress, but by then, she was only a skeleton. If we wanna look at that story, you know, glass half full kind of mentality, she probably dodged a bullet anyways. Want a yummy meatball? Here, I'll feed it to you. Check this one out. Creep status. All right, so to wrap it up, thank you again for tuning in. Until next time, bye.